and Sadaya Sadaya with faith and be to her and endowed. So, translation Suspensions are ever direct of emotional service due to the two attempts to send that information. Therefore, and therefore, although they perform various kinds of sacrifices and take great vows to satisfy the demigods and forefathers, they are not interested in Christian consciousness, in emotional service. Please can you this one for the people. Such questions are ever direct of emotional service. Of emotional service. Due to being too attached. Due to being too attached. To sense gratification. To sense gratification. And therefore, and therefore, although they perform various kinds of sacrifices. Although they perform various kinds of sacrifices. And take great vows. And they are to satisfy the demigods and for fathers. They are not interested in Christian consciousness. They are not interested in Christian consciousness. In worship service. It's just so true. And Papa, in the Bible of Gita 720, it is said that persons who worship demigods have lost. They are intelligence. Command as hard, ridicule. They are not attracted to sense gratification. Therefore, they worship the divorce. It is, of course, recommended in the scriptures that the one wants money, health, or education, then he should worship the various divorce. Materialistic persons, uh, immaterialistic person has manifold demands, and all oh, there are manifold animals to satisfy his senses. The great many who want to continue to prosper, who want to continue a prosperous materialist with life, generally worship the demigods or the forefathers by offering pinda or Respectful of nations. Such persons are the rest of Christian consciousness and are not interested in devotional service to the Lord. This kind of so called pious and religious man is the result of impersonalism. The impersonalists maintain that the supreme and true has no form and that one can imagine any form he likes for his benefit and worship in that way. Therefore, the Greek ladies or mentors men say that they can worship any form of the God as worship of the supreme God. Especially among the Hindus, those who are meat eaters prefer to worship the goddess Kali because it is prescribed that one can sacrifice a goat before that goddess. They maintain that where one worships the goddess Kali or the spirits of the god of Krishna or any that god, the destination is the same. This is first class as God. And such people are misled. But they prefer this class. But the Gita does not accept such rascal them. And it's clearly stated that such methods are meant for persons who have lost their intelligence. The same judgment is confirmed here. And the word Kama Buddha, meaning one who has lost his sense. Or is infatuated by loss of attraction to sense gratification. Kanamudas are direct of Krishna consciousness and most service and are infatuated by strong desire for sense gratification. Worshippers of demigods are condemned both 
in the Bhagavad Gita and in Srimad Bhagavatam. Om Ayyam Tiram Sam, Yodhanam Salam Kali, Sitsar, Om Yudhikam, Yudhikam Tassan, Sivu Kodhi Vipam. The Jaitanya Om Stam, Stam Kudhi, Yim Kudhi, Sayat Mukhi, Kadamiya, 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 Sivu, Yes, it is not I am always this dance is something that we can easily relate to. Not an abstract. You see this is going on. People prefer to worship the demigods, the demigods, than to worship Krishna. Sometimes they, they argue that um, Krishna, you know, takes away, you know, takes away, even the, the, the things we want to die from us. So, what do you do? Why worship a God that will take away what you have? We should beg from the God. And the God, God is begging from us. He's taking away from us. He's begging from us. But no. Uh, it's not that Krishna takes away the resources of his devotees. Rather, Krishna examines each and every one of us to see how well we are able to manage the resources at our disposal. And it is fine that we are capable of even managing the whole universe. He will give us even do this. And talking about managing resources, if we are not even able to manage ourselves, how are we going to manage the universe? The Christian gave you a very, very beautiful place here in Mount Hills. But he can give you uh, the whole of family views. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. I remember when I was younger, uh, I was in Africa. I joined, I was born in Africa. I joined the world. I was young in the temple in Africa. So I remember before I got invited by some professors to come to the US for presentation. So when when I was in Africa, <coughs> my internet uh, tent, so I was, uh, I was championing a cause with some of the devotees of building a temple in Lagos. 
And so we have this uh, land which is near the airport. It is So uh, the coach is again, and then uh, you know we already done the first taking, second taking as well. And so he came, he went over the place and he asked me, why did you, why did you make it? He goes, how did you go to the country? He said, how did you make it? So I said, you know, Krishna made it. <laughs> <laughs> he got upset and said, I didn't know Krishna made it. How did you make it? <laughs> Yes, so even the most difficult players, if the devotees come together, they work as a nuclear devotional team. Amazing accomplishments created. Just Krishna wants to see how we are people centered, we are people oriented. And when that is done, we are devoted to orient. Now, if that mindset is there, correct, Krishna can give us the whole world. So, I'm just amazed, you know, this beautiful place. If I wanna, when I when I uh, when I came to Illinois, I was in Nakabir, and I was shocked. I mean, the place that they have a very big you know, big premises. Sort of a big, huge, huge building. Now they can build a pure very temple in Air Force. Wow, Krishna could be ready to. <laughs> so Krishna is available for us. He wants to facilitate the fulfillment of our desires in our service to me. That's it. Krishna is ready to fulfill our desires in our attempts to serve. Because Krishna owns everything in this world. He owns everything. And if the devotees are sincerely working together, here is it. Sincerely working together without any personal motivation, Krishna can give the devotees of his God. So, here in this text, Prabhupada is bringing, uh, bringing, uh, reminding us how the mentality of those who worship the demigods, and of course, Krishna mentions in Gita that people worship the demigods, you know, they are not, they're not very intelligent. Why is that? Because, see, if you have a close relationship with the governor of Michigan, why try to go to secure something through a local government council? You know the government. You have a close relationship, but you can go to the government straight, contract, whatever, and you get it. But if you don't know the government, you have to go past to all this, you know, middle people or whatever. And sometimes you have Air Force. We will stampede it. And have so many obstacles. Because everybody in the league wants to show how, you know, how they are Ishwar, Ishwar of Ham, Ham Bodhi, Sidoham, all of us, hey, see, see how important I am. You have to, you have to do like this, then I will allow you to go to see the God. So, trying to go through the demigods is considered unintelligent. Because with, if someone has a relationship with Krishna, why go to the demigods? I'm Krishna. I mean, this Krishna is a valuable. He advises. I cannot say, I cannot allow, I want you to come allow it. He said, if you mean you have all the food of the sea, you don't have anything there, I cannot. Oh, it's not a camera. You're full of desires, you don't have any desires. If you mean you're in a, what we call it, chemistry, octet electron. If you mean you're an octet electron, you're self satisfied, act around. Krishna <laughs> said, Come on, come to me. Why go to the 
demigods. The demigods give us the stuff that the demigods are just, they are little men. Krishna is the name boss. He is the main director of the whole universe. So why go to see just so he said, this people are they don't have sufficient talent. And so those who have sufficient intelligence, we can identify them by how they embrace Christian consciousness. Again, if I'm to mention that people who have sufficient intelligence lost sufficient brain substance. Uh, they take to do chanting of Krishna's name. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, 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 Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, So, uh, yeah, but you know what? A preacher has to be like an educator who knows the need of the audience. And we don't just preach just to agitate people. Or oh, just to repeat what Prabhupada has said and I just say somebody. This is what Prabhupada said, you know. You worship in the dead, but you are less intelligent, you are stupid. <laughs> <laughs> Preaching is meant for harmonizing religions. Because if we speak Prabhupada, the chance that is somebody. And that person becomes his follower, his devotee. Yeah, and on the case of this Brahmachari, uh, it's later in my book. But he would, uh, he told me his story. He met Rampa. He was admired by the Swami. He met Rampa. And this man, by the way, they're super literally intelligent. They know sounds of the data like anything. The only problem is, is a concept that Brahma, magic and Brahma duty is the ultimate. So yeah, Brahma, and they like challenging people, they do. Especially they like challenging people who are not impersonalists. They see you like a threat. So you challenge Brahma, you come and challenge Brahma, and Brahma defeated him woefully, completely, smashed him. So he became Brahma the same. <laughs> <laughs> Now, if you go to the street to use that smash principle to start to smash somebody, they will just become your enemy. <laughs> so, the point is, Father, Father Rick is loving energy. If you're in the mood of chastising somebody, in the mood of smashing someone's argument, he radiates that loving energy that sucks your love. So, you say, hey, please. Make me a daughter or make me a, your son. I said, what? So, is it my mistake? We wish we do the, we do the job. It's called Bhav. It's the Bhav which we wish we do the preach. One can say a very harsh word to somebody. Like proper, he, he, he did that all the time with all, all of the scientists. And then the scientists they end up becoming his followers. So we could also say, oh, we also, for well, like that, we preach the power by being very harsh people or snatch people or, you know, criticize people that don't listen to people. But we cannot have that. So, yeah, the world is out to see how. So, the mood with which you repeat Prabhupada's statements, the audience where we are, uh, that audience we're dealing with, how ready are they, their capacity of absorbing spiritual influence and knowledge. And then, who speaks of it? He's just like an educator knows the need of the audience. So he speaks something that will benefit the audience. That will help the audience in there. The students in there. 
intellectual quest. So Prabhupada was very expert, or is very expert in preaching to people. He used the word Jesa Khan You can treat you like, you know, his grandson or granddaughter. But he can also smash you like, you know. It's just based on what he perceives or you are your mindset, your mindset, and your ability, your ability. I mean, it's like you have a car. If your car has a very powerful shock absorber, you pass through uh, a nasty road, you will not be, you will not be disturbed. Yeah. But if the car, the shock absorbers are bad, uh, be careful about it. We should be right. Because otherwise, the end of it is. So, Papa, he looks at people, he, he knows this person is good, he has a good shock absorber. Smash, smash, you have to purify it quickly. And then you move on. So, people, we have given ability, ability to absorb chastisement, to even retain the spiritual information culture. We have high limitations. And therefore, when people, when we meet people who are even engrossed in this type of ethical worship, we have to see whether the mood should be how can I help this person that is being proactive. And if we don't repeat Prabhupada's statements or we repeat Krishna, Krishna's statements to anybody and everybody at any time or whatever, we could not end up having so many enemies instead of having so many followers. So the mood of preaching is like an educator, you know, the needs of the audience. And it's just like you have a child, you have to examine the child and see what areas that he or she has a soft spot for in a social development. And then you can tell all your Krishna consciousness along that line. If you just want to order, order your child, hey, come and sit down. Hey, come and sit down. Do the job. Hey, come on. Uh, children, especially when they are young. What do they like to say? What is the first thing they like to say? What is it? Yeah. <laughs> First thing they learn to say is no. No, no, no. So we don't we don't start smacking the child because they say no. It's, it's a task, it's being a parent is a heavy, it's a heavy tool. You have to be critical and creative. Figuring out ways on how to tailor the desires, the activities of your child. Similarly, you have to figure out our audience what is their need and try to facilitate a positive spiritual change in their lives. Then, if you always say something hard, you say, Oh, this is so juicy, this is so nice. Because it's something that touch their heart to be able to really find their Krishna consciousness. So yeah, self gratification is sometimes we can go we can go overboard and hang on. You stupid, it doesn't matter. Come on, get out of that self gratification. <laughs> There's no problem with that. Then. What is the most within the yeah. So here we find that the judgment of people being about the Christian consciousness is a disaster. That see, if they are not, if they are attracted only to the Bayerian Shanti, if they are so much attached to Bayerian Shanti and devotional service, 
I think they will provide a reason to this. It is, it is, uh, it is a Christian. It's Starbucks. It is instructions. So people who are so much of time to materialize the ways of life, uh, they may not be able to take the Christian consciousness. There should be some sense of detachment, some sense of result, uh, result detachment to education. And then, Otherwise, the tendency is, I don't have the time, I don't have the time, I don't have the time. But we do have 24 hours. How are we using 24 hours? So, if we are not using our 24 hours nicely, that is in the steps in gratification. Because then it means we are just using the time to gratify our subtle desires and broad desires. So, second application is a very huge field of study. It's not just about just it's not just about eating, sleeping, meeting, only. A lot of things. Okay. How we are giving what to take to Christian is very important. All of the time to Christian. In other words. It's just like if you are in a meeting with somebody, say you are in a meeting with the governor of uh, Michigan State, nobody is going to be allowed to, the secretary of the governor will not allow anybody to come to that meeting. Yeah. So, in a similar way, when we are in a meeting with Krishna, we should not allow distractions to overwhelm us. We should concentrate on that. When we are doing our puja, whether it's at home or temple or whatever, I'm saying it because I've seen practically, I, I travel, I don't want to mention the place I went. But in America, I went to some place, I went to some presentation at an academic conference. I was staying in this devotee's uh, some place. But then he took me to another devotee's home to. So, yeah. um, so then this devotee was uh, in his puja. He had beautiful dates. And the dates you have in your home, they're not different from dates you have you have in the temple. The difference is how we treat it. So this time he was doing his Buddha. Guess what he was doing? As he was on, on the altar of the school. <laughs> this is not this is not Puranic story. I saw it. It's not live experience. I saw it. See, I was not, I was just seeing it for the first time in my life, and I couldn't tell it. So we may say, well, I've been in the movement for 50 years, 20 years, 20 years, 5 years. It's not how many years we had our spiritual conversation that really matters. The, the question is, what is the quality of that hand out, that spiritual hand out? What is the quality? Otherwise, it becomes self-communication. If we're not being qualitative in our approach to devotion services, we may hang out in that spiritual community. So, I mean, since that education is so therefore, it's important for us to see and understand that Krishna is too powerful. So, it is supreme. It is the possessor of all objects. It is power. And when we are dealing with somebody who is very elevated, then they just say, at least, even if it's artificially, we should respect that person. Who is more worthy of respect than Krishna? But when we are in Krishna, when we are in a meeting with Krishna, how can we be on the telephone when we are in a meeting with Krishna?
So this is important that we call it a cause of all devotion towards Krishna. Then all other uh, distractions, because Krishna is dead, we take one step towards Krishna, he takes several steps towards us. And he doesn't want to force his sentence. You can't force love. You can't extract love from somebody by force. Or by inquisition. No, love is something for them. Out of affection, you are you are there for somebody. You tell the person, I'm, I'm here for you. No, no, man, I'm here for you. I know, yes, but I'm here for you. I mean. So, any comments? This face looks familiar. What is your name? Huh? Did I meet you before? No. Okay. Answer the question. Yeah. So grateful to you, Maharaj, for this wonderful presentation. Uh, so many insights you gave. Uh, I was I was just contemplating on this point which you covered towards the end about the spiritual hunger. If it is not there, it just becomes a sense gratification. The, the concept is there that I want to fully give myself to Krishna. Would it apparently look like the three modes of nature just, just overcome that desire? There is a free will. But it apparently looks like there is no free will yet because three modes of nature are always interacting. Even if I don't want to be fall victim to that because of my condition, I get there. And then ultimately, I do the sense gratification rather than um, doing the devotional service, whether on the name of reading scriptures, whether on the name of doing deity worship, whether on the name of even hearing katha. The, the, the desire to serve Krishna, desire to please Krishna is not there. Desire to serve my own ego, just being overcome by these three modes of material nature. So how do I make sure that I don't fall victim to the sense gratification, though I have a hunger for spiritual experience, but it just carried away. So I want to stay in that zone. I don't want to be carried away by this. Like, how do I do that part? Because that's a nice, uh, nice question. <clears throat> now, I want the phenomenon that we can undermine the devotional service is prayers. Prayers. Now, if somebody to, is bereft of something, doesn't have some, some particular uh, something that they want to be able to use to progress in their either their social life or financial development or whatever. And they come to beg someone who has that. The that person they, they beg them from is charitable disposed. They will give it. Now who is more charitably disposed than Lord Krishna? Finally, what is not such a good sport in Krishna? Why do we hesitate to beg Krishna to intervene in our challenges? We see, if Lord Brahma, the second creator, or the supreme lord of this our universe, he prays to Krishna. The mother of Kapila Dev, Kunti, she prays to Krishna. Arjuna, he prays to Krishna. 
I'll give you, I'll give you just an example. When I was doing my PhD, I was not able to do a PhD by my guru Maharaj. He asked me to go and be a professor. And then, um, I go like, why would I say If you have somebody who doesn't even have a master's degree to go and preach to professors, what does that mean? Either, it means either, hey, go to hell. I know you're not able to do this. All right. Not doing your goals, not distributing your goals instruction, that is the devastation of your spiritual life. So he asked me to go to preach to And then, I just decided, yes, I'm going to do it. So I did it. And then I excelled. So you don't need to go get to go for a PhD because um, in three years, I started preaching to professors with going to conferences and making presentations, competing with professors, somebody who doesn't even have a master's degree. <laughs> His instruction was also encapsulated with a time. Each time we receive an instruction from the guru, that instruction is also encapsulated with a power. And there are so many examples of that in our own tradition, even in Krishna's last times. So I did that, and then I had to go get a PhD. Now, when I was doing the PhD, I chose to do management science. Why? Because I've seen a number of crises in society that are caused by religious leaders. I didn't want to associate myself with religious uh, scholarship. Just say, let me do something else. Let's choose to do money. And so when we are doing a course called Quantitative Reasoning and Analysis, yeah, there were 10 PhD students in that course. It was so difficult. It was so difficult. Statistics. PhD level statistics. The whole student failed. I was the only person who passed. And I got 90 plus. How was that? I recognized, look, statistics, this is hell. <laughs> <laughs> so I got it. You know, sometimes it's good to give your deep experience so that people don't say, oh, bad. It's so difficult to do this. It's so difficult to do this. So I like giving just practical examples. So I got the recommended books. Each time I want to read, I'll pray to Krishna. I said, Krishna, see, I'm not for statistics. I don't know anything here. Help me out. At least let me understand what I'm going to do and retain it. This is it. My good mother has ordered me to do this. Please help me, Krishna. Each time I want to read any of the textbooks, I have to pray. Krishna came to address me. It was so difficult, so all the others, all the students, they corroborated. I existed myself from those students because they were just wasting my time. You know, they, they all these uh, uh, doctoral students, they like also this socialization, so they want to make they want to make new friends. Come on, look, I have a lot of things to do. I <laughs> keep calling you here, calling you there. So I did, then I decided, okay, best thing is I'm not going to have any friends in this class. So I distanced myself. But then everyone else, they converted. The professor is a white professor. He detected that this guy needs the team together to do this because all of their work were similar. Because it's what it was so difficult. So he canceled their work. He asked all of them to go and redo the work. They would have been expelled from the school if it was a bad professor because that was a violation of academic integrity. And it's, a, it's one of the grand norms of that world in university. But it was just compassion. So he pulled them. 
it failed all of them and then got all of them to go and repeat it. So, so this is just a practical example of how prayers work. I believe that my prayers to Krishna help me to have a better understanding of that difficult subject we call statistics. So my point is, if we make a self diagnosis with few hours of progress or challenge we have, we should pray to Krishna to help us. Because that challenge is obstructed and progress in the ocean science. Therefore, we should pray to Krishna. There are so many challenges. There are so many obstacles. And I'm worshiping them. We oh, yeah. have endogenous obstacles, obstacles to the environment. We have also endogenous obstacles, obstacles from the team. And most of the nature we are talking about, they are endogenous and exogenous. The front within is so difficult to deal with an enemy from within. They are also endogenous, they also impact on us from outside. It's from within and from without. So it's very difficult to deal with the most of one's religion. But if we perform our sadhana and do the Brahma Mutra hours, that helps with the process of transcending the moons. Because early in the morning is the mood of goodness, that is very much ideal for spiritual cultivation. Whereas in the night is governed by the mood of ignorance. Afternoon, there's some sort of material activities going on. It's under the auspices of ash. So the, those times, except we don't really regulate uh, devotion life. Those periods are not really good for doing things that are going to, for instance, be changed. That's why Prabhupada set up the system in such a way that we can embark on our side before we go out to work. I know the case, I know the situation, like a temple like in Delhi. In the Delhi Mongolia, the whole hall is full of with all the professionals to come, from time, all of them, they're ready for work. Come for a moment, sit down, turn the up, shh, zoom out. Seven o'clock, you're zooming out to the office. And not different from people who are doing the temple. In fact, in Delhi, the, the, the devotees living outside, they are the big, biggest book distributors. Yes, so it's a matter of Yukta Hara, Vihara, Sia, Yukta Chetis. Counts, regulation, eating, sleeping, recreation. So devotion, the human life is meant for recreation. And self-regulation is the word for it. Any comments? Yes, my lady said comments. All right, in the absence of any comments or questions, we can join this meeting. Agree? There are some viewers online. So they want to ask a question? Hare Krishna, anybody wants to ask question online? We just want to thank Maharaj. Thank you for the amazing class, Maharaj, and uplifting class. Very grateful to you. Uh, she's saying thank What's you. What's her name? Uh, Shri Gaurangi Mataji. Okay, thank you, Gaurangi Mataji. <laughs> Anyone else who wants to ask a question? All right. 